Hi, in this video I'm going to take a look at how you can use a clipper in audio processing and specifically K-Clip 3.5 by Casrock, which has some very useful new enhancements. So let's go! Now Casrock is a plugin company that has some very nice plugins. Arguably its most famous plugin is True Iron, which is an emulation of transformers and that's known to be able to give a very analog sound to your recordings. But they also have a plugin called K-Clip, which is a clipper. It's already on version 3.5 now. And especially this version 3.5, which has been recently released, has some very useful enhancements. So I figured let's have a look at that and see in general how you can use clippers in audio processing. So let's have a look at the changes. As you can see, the 3.5 version has a new UI design with an improved visualizer. It has refactoring of the entire plugin code base, improved performance for multi-band use, general stability and performance improvements and efficiency enhancements, some improved modes for clipping that color the signal in various ways, and it has some changes which are very specific for software developers. Especially the changes for the new visualizer are very worthwhile, I think, because K-Clip's previous visualizer didn't work for me at all. It basically just showed the waveform but you couldn't actually tell very well what was being clipped and by how much it was being clipped. Now that's different in the new version. And obviously the improved colored clipping modes is also something that I'm going to check out because most of the other improvements are under the hood really. Now if by now you like this video or found it useful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell icon so you know when I post another video. But first of all, what is a clipper actually? And how does it differ from a limiter? Let's have a look at the picture. So in the top part of this picture you can see the original signal, which is basically a sine wave that varies in amplitude. If you put a limiter on that signal, it will clamp down on the larger amplitude, but with a certain attack time that you may have set, and it will try to make sure that the limited signal is very similar to the original signal. So in this picture it's still a sine wave basically. And when the original signal goes back to its smaller amplitude, you can see that there's a certain release time before the limiter also gets back to the regular amplitude. With the clipper, however, the changes are much more drastic. You can see that it just chops off the sine waves and by that it introduces extra harmonics and therefore distortion slash saturation. So a limiter is meant to really be very transparent, trying to make sure that you can't hear it at all. Whereas a clipper is less concerned about whether you hear it or not. Although there are now also clipper modes which make the whole process much more transparent. And it also depends a bit on what type of signal you put the clipper to determine whether you can actually hear it or not. Now for me I would put a clipper typically on for example a drum bus in a mix. To make sure that all the peaks are really reined in in a hard way and make it even a bit more gritty maybe. So that my final mix is not too peaky and when I send it to the mastering engineer he doesn't have to limit it too drastically to get the peaks under control. You can still do that in mastering as well, which is my other use. But I like to do it in the mix as well because I can zoom in much more into a specific instrument. Now the second way I use clippers is in mastering. Whenever I do some home mastering for example, because I do not do actual serious mastering. And in that case I will sometimes use a clipper before the last limiter to already control some of the peaks so that the limiter has to work less hard and can even work in a more transparent way. So with all of that theory out of the way, let's have a look at K-Clip 3.5. So in this Cubase 12 project you can see a stereo drum mix, typically something that I would have on the drum bus in a full mix. And on there we have the K-Clip 3 plugin, version 3.5.0. So if I now play the audio, basically nothing happens, there's no clipping yet because the audio level is low enough to not need clipping at this moment. Now there's a couple of ways that we can cause this to clip, and one of them is by lowering the threshold. However, what I usually like to do with this plugin is to use the input and output knobs and to make sure that they are linked, and then increase the input until I get some clipping. So let's see how that works. So from the red peaks in the new visualizer you can clearly see which parts of the signal are clipped and which peaks are clipped. And although I've increased the input gain here, it has equally decreased the output gain so that the total level remains constant by using this link button over here. And that's the way I usually control the clipping with this plugin. Now there are some other controls, for example the zoom for the visualizer. Or 
or the threshold that you can use to also cause clipping without adjusting the in and output controls. There's the mid-side control that you can use to adjust the mid-side stereo field prior to clipping. There's the mix control, so you can mix in the original signal or go fully for the processed and clipped signal. And there's a nice delta function here, which allows you to listen to the differences. So let's try that for our current example. Yeah, so basically when you push a delta function, you hear exactly which parts of the signal are clipped and you hear them as little digital ticks really, but it gives you some impression of what exactly was clipped. Now currently the soften control is set at 0%, that means that the clipper is really hard, but you can also make it a bit more soft so that it works a little bit more like a limiter so that it doesn't actually cut off the peaks very quickly, but that it more gradually cuts them off. So let's see what that does. Well, it's pretty smooth either way, but it gets a bit more smooth if you also use the soften function. Now, if you really want to do some colorations, they have a couple of different modes for the clipper. So let's go through those while playing some audio. Yeah, pretty cool when you want to use some more coloring while you're clipping, right? Now there are some other controls. One is the ceiling, which is basically another clipper at the very end of the signal processing that makes sure that you're really not going above a certain level at the output. And how that ceiling operates is also influenced by how you set the loudness target. You can also see how much the signal was clipped, the max, 5.8 dB in, in our case. You can see the integrated loudness of what we just played. And you can also see the momentary loudness if we actually play audio. K-Clip also has some useful settings, one being the oversampling. So online oversampling means that that is the real-time oversampling that's happening in the clipper while we are playing back like you just heard. However, when you're exporting your track, you get a much higher quality of oversampling, in this case 32 times. And if you want to, you can also adjust the oversampling that you can hear while just playing back the audio. It allows you to show tooltips, on the various controls. You can disable the visualizer if you don't like it. And you can use OpenGL graphics, which is currently experimental. And I understood that for Windows, it doesn't quite work well yet. So I have disabled it. Now, if you've paid close attention, then you may have noticed that I skipped one of the buttons in the user interface. Because what I've shown you so far is only one dimension of the Casrock K-Clip 3. And there is a whole other dimension by enabling the number of bands to four over here, because then you go into the multi-band mode of K-Clip 3, and then you can do basically everything that I showed in the single band mode for four different frequency bands. I have to say that I've never had the need to use this, but if you need to, go right ahead and tweak away. So in general, I think clippers are a very worthwhile type of processing, and especially this K-Clip 3.5 from Casrock is a good example of a very nice clipper. But let me know in the comments if you use clippers in your audio processing at all, which clippers you like best and how you use those. Next up is my video on how I do home mastering in Cubase without clippers, by the way. So have a look at that. Enjoy and see you soon. Mm -hmm.